And welcome back to the Constitution Line by Line. I'm Paul Fabrizio. I'm Don Frazier, and we're bidding farewell to Article 3. <laughs> we're down to the last section. This I want is one of those little horns yeah. to blow. <laughs> I'll probably pull it up on your phone. They probably have an Air yeah. Horn app. Yeah. Um, so this is the last section of Article 3 and the last word on the judiciary and its jurisdictions and its powers. And this one in particular deals with treason and the punishment thereof. Right. Are you ready? Let's have it. Okay. The Congress shall have power to declare the punishment of treason. But no attainder of treason shall work corruption of blood or forfeiture except during the life of the person attained. Okay, so Congress has the jurisdiction. Congress can set up the penalty for treason, and they have set it up as punishable by death. Yes. But as we talked about, has anybody ever been in recent history ever been convicted? Well, we need to put that in the comments. If you know somebody or you know of a particular case, yeah. feel free to add it to the yeah, comments. please. Now, I think the second part of this is what's critical. Right. Um, show, uh, but no attainder of treason, so no punishment of treason shall work corruption of blood. Corruption of blood is an ancient term. It is. And it has to deal with the family carrying on the punishment. That's Old Testament. Okay. I mean, old, you know, even to the seventh generation That's or whatever right. else. And so, yeah, the corruption of blood was a big issue. And it was a common issue throughout the human experience. Mm -hmm. And the United States says, no, nah, it ends here. Right. It ends in this place. We are not going to play by those old ancient rules anymore. Right. The, the treasonous person is subject X, you know, the person we're talking about, not their kids not their grandkids, and we are not going to seize property that had been in the family forever just because he was a knucklehead against the federal government, Yeah, which has implications then for the confiscation acts mm -hmm. that were passed during the American Civil War. <laughs> Always comes back to the Civil War because Civil War is kind of the pop quiz over the Constitution, as it turns out. Because we ignored it. <laughs> we ignored it, and sometimes we applied it differently than we thought, et cetera, et cetera. And so the Confiscation Act said, hey, if you're in rebellion against the United States, we're going to go in there and seize your property. Now, the question is, do the kids get it back? Mm -hmm. And that's when everybody's going, ah, oh, well, gee whiz, that's a little different than we thought. So that's how come you can't break up plantations under most circumstances and distribute it to the former slaves. You know, a lot, there's this rolling misconception that there was this idea of about 40 acres and a mule. Right. All right. Well, that was one thing that was floated, but actually was never implemented on a national scale. There's a couple of local incidents where that was done as a pilot to see how it worked. But the problem is, if you're seizing these guys' property because they're in violation or they're actively engaged against the United States, if you, even if you hang them for treason, well, what happens to their estate? Mm -hmm. You know, the French had a phrase during their revolution in which <laughs> yeah. they would seize properties after, you yeah. know, slicing somebody's head off, uh, and they'd say their property was forfeit to the republic. Ooh. The British— That's, that's just a land grab. That's that, all it's, that is. It's a land it's, grab it's, it's by the government. government. Yeah. And the British were big on this. Boy, if the king decided you were the bad guy, they would seize Ooh. your estates, your properties in your estates, and deprive you of your titles, etc. And you were done. You right. were excommunicated from the cool kids, and subsequent generations could try to, you know, kiss butt to get back in good grace with the government— these you're guys not, you're said you're not going to get your property back. Yeah, but these guys, the, the Americans said, said, this ends here. We're just not playing by those rules. It's your punishment, not your family's, not your next generation. That's exactly right, and I think that that shows how sensitive these guys were. That every person was a citizen, not a subject. An important point. A very important point. And in essence. A real tribute and a real display of the importance of our rights 
yes. listed out here in the Constitution. Some very basic human rights. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Yeah. These guys believed in the dignity of every individual. Well, they struggled with slaves. Well, absolutely, because they, they didn't they, consider they, them people. But yeah. once they are declared people... Then it matters. Over, it took them 100 years, but, you know, slowly but surely dragging yeah. them into, you know, full yeah. citizenship, but, which is refreshing. But you look at some of the things that we've talked about, and this being a uh, recent example, we're talking here about treason, and you think about how scarred some of these framers must yeah. have been by what they experienced from the British. Who, and we can fix these yeah, issues. No longer. It ends here. It ends here. Now, who's the most famous traitor from the American Revolution? Aaron Burr? Uh, Aaron Burr, actually, he's quite the patriot during the American Revolution. You're thinking of him, uh, yeah, be, be, yeah, Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold. How could I All forget? Right. Now, Benedict Arnold is an interesting fella because he was perhaps one of the most gifted brigadier generals in the American Army. Okay. And he fought famously at Saratoga in the Saratoga right. campaign. Uh, took a bullet in the leg, and they had to take his leg off. I mean, he bled on behalf of the uh, cause. But Fields felt as though he had been slighted. Mm -hmm. And so the British said, are your feelings hurt? Did they talk <laughs> ugly to you? Why, yes, they did. Come join our side. And, I'll, and the price for admission is if you'll give us the plans to West Point so we can – uh, turn that position, then we'll give you a commission in the British Army and you can hang out with the cool kids and we'll forgive all your treason mm -hmm. and actually make you one of us. So Benedict Arnold does. Did he get money too? Uh, he got paid. Okay. And so he, and he gets a nice position, and uh, but he backs the wrong horse. Mm -hmm. uh, Benedict Arnold, as a British officer, burned a lot of Virginia property in and around Richmond and up towards really? Alexandria. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was he was not a nice guy as a British officer. And at the end of the war, he couldn't stay there. You know, the, the United States is victorious, and he ends up dying uh, of old age and leglessness yeah. in, um, in London. Okay. And his last request was to be buried in his Continental uniform. Oh, all right. Wow. So, yeah, so what do you do with a guy like Benedict Arnold? Well, there's one monument to Benedict Arnold. Where? In Canada? At Saratoga. At Saratoga? But it's in the United States. In the United States, and it's only to his leg. <laughs> so if you go to... There's a picture of a... There is. A there is a monument with <laughs> this booted leg, and it's Benedict Arnold's <laughs> leg, the only patriotic part of the man. <laughs> He gave his leg. He gave his leg for our country. freedom. And so that's that's how weird our relationship is with the entire concept of treason. <laughs> We're going to honor what good you did. That's right. So when you go to Saratoga, find Benedict, the monument to Benedict Arnold's leg. It's near the Great Redoubt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. fun, fun things you run across <laughs> yeah exactly all right so that's the last part that's the last part of article three the judicial branch um next we're getting into the grab bag of articles to the constitution no real theme just things they needed to talk about yeah things that we thought of yeah <laughs> that we needed to write yeah. down so oh, it was in yeah. there oh, wait 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 yeah you know i was having oysters the other day yeah, down yeah. by the wharf and this kind of popped into my yeah, head yeah well <laughs> was it political theory or cholera <laughs> you know who knows all right so that's our line that's our article and we pick up article four next time